Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Frederick Presbyterian Church where there's quite a buzz in the air. Lots of syrup. <laughs> Lots of syrup on those pancakes, I guess. The bulletin is full of announcements of all that's happening in the life and ministry of this congregation. If you're with us for the first time or if you've been a part of this congregation for a hundred years, find your way to be a part of all that's happening here in the life and ministry here at Frederick Presbyterian Church. I would just draw your attention to one announcement and that is uh, September 15th through 17th, which is next weekend, is the church-wide retreat. Worship will take place here at 1030 along with Sunday School for All Ages at 930 here in the building uh, while others are away for, t uh, for the retreat and so where worship will be happening there as well. Communion will be taking place both there at the retreat and also here. Uh, Judy Johnson will be leading worship here. And like I said, Sunday School for All Ages will be happening here at, at Frederick Presbyterian Church in Frederick. Having said that, if you still are on the fence about going to the retreat, uh, if you're signed up for the retreat, raise your hand. About 65 people are signed up, but there's room for 340 or more. So come, let, let me know, let Jonathan know, uh, send an email to Nikki in the office or Lisa Myers, uh, let them know that you're um, ready to go and you're signing up, that's next weekend. So it looks like there are several, uh, a lot. All right, who's first? Here, Ashley. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm the director of youth ministry. Youth Fellowship kicks off this evening. Youth Fellowship is open to 6th through 12th graders, um, and your friends are always welcome. Um, we have activities this evening and dinner for youth and their parents. So we hope to see everyone there. And it's fried chicken tonight. Yes, fried chicken, but bring a side dish or dessert to share. Hello, I'm Sarah Matthews. I'm representing the deacons. The deacons are going to be holding a three-session seminar called a Issues with Aging. The first session will be on September 24th, and we'll be discussing different types of dementia, um, the types and learning about how to cope with dementia. We'll also be discussing in that session um, resources for caregivers. It will start at 1.30 on Sunday afternoon, go from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. Um, each session will run for about a half an hour with 15 minutes for questions, then a 15 minute break, and then we'll start with the caregiver session. And I'll come back later on to tell you about the two other sessions that we're having. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Dave Biber with the Mission Committee and just wanted to remind everybody that we're going to be doing a home improvement project um, two different weekends, Thursday through Sunday, a uh, week and a half from now. So the 21st through the 24th and the 28th through October 1st, we'll be improving houses uh, for people that aren't able to do that work for themselves. We're supported by Rebuilding Together, hence the, uh, the t-shirt. I think you'll maybe get a cool t-shirt if you come help us. But we need a few more volunteers, and there's a meeting right after church uh, downstairs. So if you're at all interested, please come down and, and hear about it. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Hello, I'm Miranda. This is Susan. We're also from the Mission Committee, and we have been gathering the backpack supplies for the refugees for the last couple of months. We finally have all the supplies, so if anybody wants to help us pack up these backpacks after church, that would be awesome because it's like a million little pieces that go into these bags. Um, pretty simple. Everything is labeled, but if a lot of people could help us, that would be awesome. We'll be in the Weaver Room. After you get a snack, come on up, pack up a couple backpacks. We have 50 of them with literally like 500 pieces that go into them, so. But it'll be easy and fun, thank you. Thank you. Are there other announcements? Let us worship God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Sing God's praise in the of the faithful. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to make our common prayers to you. And you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. O oh Lord, fulfill the desires and prayers of your servants, as you know what is best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. we are gathered together as people born of water and the Spirit. We have made promises to be Christ's faithful disciples and to show Christ's love to our life's end. Although we fail to fulfill our baptismal vows, God's faithful love endures forever. Because we are confident in God's grace, let us gather and confess our sin and the sin of the world. Holy Jesus, you have explained the law very clearly. Love. Love one another. Oh, one another, nothing but love. Do no wrong to a neighbor. But even though we know what love means, we have not done it. We have fallen short, causing harm to others through careless action and thoughtless lack of action. Forgive us. Teach us to, to love more fully, more perfectly, as generously as you love, following your law and fulfilling your will. Amen. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, listen and hear the good news. As people born of water and the Spirit, we have died to the old life and new life has already begun in us. God's grace is poured out on us and over us every day, all day. 
So come to the water and remember your baptism and be thankful. Live as one who has been raised to new life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Rejoicing in the new life that we know in Jesus Christ, let us love and forgive one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another with signs and words of Christ's peace. Still gathering. People are still gathering. Isla, are you the last one from the balcony? <laughs> Out of the door. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Did everybody have pancakes this morning? I think almost everybody was there for pancakes. They were really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. They, Wow. Okay, well, one of my favorite things about Frederick Presbyterian Church are pancakes, because we do pancakes really well here. They were, I had two, and it was, they were big and fluffy and fluffy, fl really, really high. And did anybody see the Presbyterian pancake? Yeah. Okay. You wanted to eat it. Well, uh, don't tell anybody what the Presbyterian pancake looked like. They have to come next year to see the Presbyterian. No, actually, it was a pancake this big. And uh, did anybody eat it? No. no. Huh? No, I wanted to eat it. You, everybody wanted to eat it. Well, we should have cut it up and passed it around. I want to eat it. I it was too big for my tummy. It was too big for your tummy. I it. You did? Well, so that's one of, one of my favorite things about, uh, about church. One of my other favorite things about church just happened, and that is 
uh, passing of the peace, which is just a wonderful time. And sometimes I just sit, stand up here and just watch people greet each other in the name of the Lord on Sunday morning. The other thing that one of my favorite things about uh, church and Sunday morning uh, particularly and our time together is singing. Did you hear us singing the glory to God just now? That was just wonderful and powerful. So I'm going to ask you and I'm going to ask everybody out there what, don't shout it out at one time, give some thought to it, what your favorite thing about church is? Your favorite thing about church? The bread and the cup. Somebody top that. <laughs> Madeline. Madeline likes Sunday school. Liam. Pancakes. Alex. The manna and the quail that come in the, in the That's evening. A That's a good song, right. James, pancakes again. So let's see if anybody out there has an... Oh, go ahead. Snacks after, fellowship time. And fellowship time has become a lot of fun downstairs, hasn't it? So let's see if anybody out there has a, a favorite thing about church. Anybody? Well, wait, wait, wait. Let's do it one at a time. Sermon. No pressure. Ellen Dean. What's that? The getaway next weekend. Charlie Henson. People. Uh, who said that? It says some of the jokes. Uh, <laughs> Jane, the music. I see a hand back there, but I can't see who it is. Julia, singing hymns. Easter bunny. Easter jokes, some of them. Anybody else? I don't think we've heard from anybody up in the balcony. Jesus. New bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things, right? Well, there's so much here. There's so much here at this church and what it means to be a part of a church or the church that is so special that brings us together that we share with one another and that we are so excited about that we want to tell and show other people. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tell other people and share with other people what we do here that makes this place such a wonderful, special place. Look, Miss Jane has brought PJ here, and I don't know what Jane would like to say about PJ. What would you like to say about PJ? He loves church. He loves church. Look, do you see him? He's so helpful. He's a helpful dog. So, when, you know, with a helpful dog, you, you should always make sure that it's okay to talk to them and, and not just run up and start hugging because they're at work. He's at work. I've seen him when, he take, when his vest gets taken off. He's a whole different dog. Um, so. Oh, so this is a good idea. So uh, Madeline said, when two people want to greet each other and one person might not want to touch or, you know, hug or handshake, just do a quick high five or even a fist bump maybe, right? Or, or, or a wave. But not actually. Or an air, okay? We can do that, an air. Not actually touch. Not actually touch. So let us pray. Oh God, for all that is special about your people, your family, your church, we give you thanks. Amen. morning. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, as your word is read and proclaimed, pass among your gathered people. Open minds to increase our understanding of you. 
opening hearts to bind us together in your love. In Jesus' names we ask. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and lie, live, turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. Owe no one anything except for love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, 
not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church 
sins against you. Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I had one as a kid. Maybe you did too. Maybe there's a chance you have one now. Or maybe there is one in your classroom at school. You look at it, you watch it a little while, then you look at it again, and each day you notice a slight change here or there, slightly different from day to day, but always changing. In some ways, it's so alive. Different chambers with routes created by carrying piece by piece. Each room has a specific use. Food storage, a place for the newborns, a place for the dead. The workers do their work, crossing paths, lifting, carrying, caring, moving, feeding, tending, creating. They all, they each have their own part, their own work to do. Of course, I'm talking about an ant farm. Did you ever have one? Do you have one now, anybody? Nobody? Sort of? Ours just died. Two little plates of clear plastic or glass with some damp sand, some sugar water, and some ants, including the egg-laying queen. About a month ago now, longtime FPC member Jerry Smith died. Jerry, born here in the county, grew up here, lived and worked here all of his life except for the years that he was away at WVU. Jerry and his wife, Vanessa, well-loved, very much part of the larger community, the larger Frederick community, the Middletown community, lots of friends and family, and very much a part of this church family, this church community. Now, we knew that the service on August 19th was going to be huge. Extra chairs were set up in the Weaver Room, and closed-circuit TV was arranged for the Weaver Room for overflow. And as is the case when someone dies, we, the church, the church offers to help with food after the service. Now, some churches, some traditions call this a repast a time of celebration for family and friends after a funeral service. Coordinated and executed excellently by the deacons of our congregation, much planning and organizing went into play. Supplies were bought, food was recruited, and on and on. Tables moved, chairs rearranged. The service in here started at 10.30, But you were all here, you all were here much earlier than that on that Saturday morning. Lifting, carrying, caring, moving, getting ready to feed, tending to what needed to be done. 
It was an amazing sight for me to just stand and watch. Much buzzing going around on in here. Folks just doing what needed to be done. Now, in the days and weeks following Jerry's service, I have described that morning before the service, and actually during the service, and certainly after, why it was like watching an ant farm. Now, in addition to the folks who were here, moving and carrying and setting up and serving, there were a whole lot more of you who provided food. Mountains and mountains of brownies piled high on platters and more deviled eggs than I've ever seen in one place ever before. Simply amazing. Some of you knew Jerry very well. Some of you had gone on youth mission trips with him or sat near him in church or attended Tuesday morning Bible studies and other groups with him. Some of you knew Jerry, enough to wave to him across the aisle. And some of you had never, ever met him. Yet, you brought food. If I were going to describe church to someone, I would tell them about Jerry's funeral and the celebration downstairs. Now, of course, there are many ways to describe, to picture church. Paul uses the image of the human body, the, the body being the body of Christ, with Christ as the head and all the people making up the various body parts. No one part is more important than the other parts, each part doing their respective job. An image that comes to my mind is a large family sitting at a dinner table, Everyone gathered around. The table has no end in sight. There's room at the table for all. There's sharing of food and remembering stories. There's thinking back and looking forward. There's laughing and there's crying. All together, the family of God. Interestingly, the word church is only mentioned by Jesus two times. Both times in Matthew's gospel. We heard the first of the two instances just two weeks ago when Jesus calls Peter the rock on which the church would be built. And then today we hear the second occasion when Jesus says, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church... Let such a one to you be as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, Jesus says, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three of you are gathered in my name, I am there among you. Now, some biblical scholars would for sure argue that Jesus did not really say these words. I mean, did Jesus really have an organized church in his mind when he was teaching and healing and feeding? Well, who knows? In other words, it is curious that here in Matthew's gospel, Jesus is talking about something, the church, that has not even taken form or shape yet. Well, nevertheless, that's the topic for a Bible study. 
But what Jesus is talking about here is a gathering, a collection, a community of people, and the reality of what that means, that being a group is made up of people, humans, living, working, being together. And well, we all know what that means. But here Jesus is talking about those who are gathered together in his name. The word church in the New Testament is the translation of the Greek word ekklesia, ekklesia, which means to be called out. Those who are called out, the called out ones. And as far as Jesus and the rest of the New Testament is concerned, the followers of Jesus are the called out ones. That's who we are. The called out ones. Called out of the world for the work of Jesus. Called out of the world to be the body of Christ the church. We are called out of the world to be with one another for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to live as siblings in Christ. You see, the Bible is all about living together in community with one another. That's what the whole Ten Commandments are all about, how to treat those around you. And the New Testament is no different. What is the greatest commandment, Jesus asked? Love the Lord your God with everything you have and your neighbor as yourself. But that's what the church is. A community. A family. Did you notice how today's verses from Matthew ended? Today's passage ends with Jesus saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Now, I suppose someone could ask, well, how do you know? How do you know Jesus is there? Well, I guess I would just say, you just know. I know the presence of Jesus here. I see the presence of Jesus here as we are gathered together in his name. I know the presence of Jesus in the things that you say to each other. I see the presence of Jesus in the welcoming arms and handshakes shared. I know the presence of Jesus among us and the things we do together that really can't be done by ourselves. Feeding 10,000 people in the month of October. Singing brilliantly the old tunes and new songs of the church. Offering our time and gifts and resources and abilities to take somebody to the doctor or to fix something here at the church, or meals signed up for in a matter of minutes, volunteering to teach Sunday school, not agreeing with something someone said in a Tuesday morning Bible study, but yet caring for each other in Christ. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. The church the body of Christ, the family of God. Barbara Brown Taylor says, when families work together, they are God's way of teaching us important things like how to share and how to work together and how to take care of one another. A healthy family has a way of smoothing our rough edges by making us rub up against each other like tumbling pebbles in a jar. 
Living with other people, we learn that we cannot have everything our own way. We, we learn to compromise, giving up some of the things we want so that other people can have some of the things they want. And while it is never easy learning this, give and take is part of learning how to be fully human. She says, in a lot of ways, it's a real nuisance to belong to a family. It would be so much easier if we were just a bunch of individuals loosely bound by similar beliefs, but whose affairs remained an essentially private matter between us and God. But according to Jesus, there is no such thing as privacy in the family of God. Our life together is the chief way God has chosen for being with us. And it is of ultimate importance to God. Our life together is the place where we are comforted, where we are confronted, where we are tested, and where we are redeemed by God through one another. It is the place where we come to know God. Church, the called out ones, the family of God, the body of Christ, the community of the followers of Jesus, the ant farm of Christ. That's who we are. That's what we are a part of together, whether we want to be or not. The presence of Jesus among us, bringing us together, working through us and on us and in spite of us, giving each of us our work, our ministry, that is the church. And for that church, and your part in it and mine too, I am so, so thankful.
Let us gather our hearts and our minds, our souls, our whole bodies in prayer. This morning as we gather, we remember the people of Morocco and the devastating earthquake that happened there yesterday. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God of grace and God of steadfast, never-ending love, we thank you for your love for the world that you created, and we thank you for our part in it. We give you thanks for calling us to be part of your church family, especially here in this place. Holy Jesus, you have called us out to be your follower, and we pray for your grace as we try to do all that you call us to do and to be all that you call us to be. Increase in us, we pray, the capacity to love you and our neighbors without hesitation and without reserve, and to love even those who don't love us. Not half-heartedly, but with our whole hearts, we bring before you the cares, the concerns, and the joys that occupy us. Holy God, we remember before you those who are at odds with one another in families, or in neighborhoods, or in offices, or in schools, or even in the church. We pray, O oh God, for nations in the midst of internal or external struggles and conflict. Teach us, O oh God, to seek nonviolent ways toward resolution. And help us to speak the truth and to listen with understanding when perspectives are far apart. O oh God, we pray for love to bring peace into every troubled heart and place. Merciful God, we remember before you those who have physical needs today, people who are hungry and thirsty, people who are exhausted by the demands of work or caregiving, people who are sick or undergoing surgery, and people who live with chronic pain. Bring relief and bring rest, we pray. Especially we remember these names before you now that we mention aloud or in our hearts. Loving God, we remember those weighed down with needs of heart and soul, a worry that keeps us awake at night, grief that accompanies us wherever we go, depression that clouds us, or an addiction that grips us. Lift all of these heavy burdens with the light and peace of your presence, we pray. Sustain us over the long journey toward health, and give us a trust in you and ourselves and those who love us. Loving God, we remember before you not only our cares, but also our joys. A birthday celebrated, an anniversary enjoyed, new beginnings, a baby born, a new school, a new school year, a new job, a new relationship. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of laughter, for enduring friendships, and for new friendships, and for cherished memories. And we give thanks that with you there is always a new beginning, 
a way where there is no way, hope beyond no hope, and life beyond death. O God, hear these and all our prayers, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome, Owe no one anything except to love one another. So come, let us love one another, and let us love all in God's world by sharing what we have been given so that needs are met and the love of God is shared both here and beyond. With gladness, let us present the tithes and offerings of our life and labor to the Lord. be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God whose giving knows no ending, we know how to say thank you when we receive. Right now we we say thank you as we give. In our giving, hear our heartfelt gratitude for all that you are and all that we have. Bless these gifts for your work in the world and bless the other gifts we have to bring to your mission, opening our eyes to how you are calling us to be about our own work, our own ministry, as members of your body, the Church of Jesus Christ. For we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Sisters and brothers, go in the name of the Lord. Proclaim the good news. Be persistent in prayer. Do the work of the gospel and carry out the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord.